I'm Dr. Elise Day, neurourologist at Massachusetts General Hospital and Spalding Rehabilitation Network. This video teaches quick lessons on how to get an accurate read with Eurodynamics water-based catheters. Necessary equipment includes a dual lumen fluid-based urethral catheter, rectal balloon catheter, and EMG patches. These will be connected to your multi-channel Eurodynamics tower. Many of us also use fluoroscopy to obtain x-ray images during Eurodynamics. You will also need 10 cc syringes, sterile saline, sterile x-ray contrast if fluoroscopy is being used, sterile transducers, and Eurodynamic measurement tubing, as well as pump tubing. If the test needs to be performed through an indwelling catheter, you will need a three-way stopcock and a Christmas tree adapter. Both the fill line and the Eurodynamics measurement tubing for the P-Vest will be connected to the three-way stopcock, then attached to the drainage port of the Foley. During active filling, artifact will be seen as a thickened line on the tracing. It can be stopped periodically for a more accurate read of the pressure. Here you see the Eurodynamics tower prepared with transducers for the P-abdomen and P-Vest, Eurodynamics measurement tubing connected to each, radio-opaque dye connected to the infusion tubing, and the EMG patches prepared for attachment. An extra bag of sterile saline is available if infusion volume is high. The transducer is primed with sterile saline or water to evacuate air, then capped, then the measurement tubing is primed. The pump tubing is inserted according to the proper directionality. If it is poorly centered or inadvertently reversed, the fill will not proceed properly. Urethral catheterization will be sterile. Unless there are issues of pain or difficult catheterization, the urethra is catheterized twice. First for postvoid residual, and next to place the smaller dual lumen urodynamics catheter. A triple lumen catheter can be placed if formal urethral pressure profile will be conducted. Appropriate zeroing to atmospheric pressure and adjustment of transducer height is essential to a high quality study. Omission of zeroing introduces artifact as high as 50 centimeters of water. Failing to place the transducers at the height of the pubic symphysis can introduce 10 centimeters of water error. These numbers are enough to misinterpret a surgical diagnosis such as bladder outlet obstruction. Once happy with the cough, we will zero. The tracings on the catheters from the bladder pressure, p vest and the rectum, P-abdomen, should show the same slope and amplitude with cough. Disparities imply something is interfering with the read. In persons with high spinal cord injury, thoracic and abdominal muscles will not generate a great impulse. Crede can be used to assist the impulse. We will troubleshoot until the read is yoked appropriately. So how do we troubleshoot? The first step, if the bladder catheter, the p vest is not reading, is to add a little fluid to the bladder. The stopcock must be toggled off to the transducer, connecting the lure lock to the patient to do this. Next, the catheter position can be checked. In females, digitalization after asking permission can ensure the catheter is properly positioned in the urethra. The 10 centimeter mark should be at the meatus. In men, the meatus will be approximately at the 22 centimeter mark. It should be adjusted according to the length of the urethra. The rectal catheter should be two to three centimeters beyond the sphincter with 2.5 centimeters in the balloon. All air must be evacuated and replaced with fluid. If the rectum is closed or must otherwise be avoided, the vagina or an abdominal stoma can serve as an alternative. In the beginning of the slide, you can see an altered slope of the rectal pressure with cough versus the PVAS. This implies air is in the line. Unfortunately, this study was run without correcting and the artifact impacts the quality of the study throughout. Note also the study was performed through a Foley with a three-way stopcock as evidenced by the fuzzy line during filling. Here we will evacuate air from the rectal catheter. Attach a lure lock to each port Withdraw the air and refill with approximately 3 cc's as some will be lost during reconnection. A three-way stopcock can make this particular adjustment easier.
We can also investigate the tubing to see if there is any air trapped in the lines dampening the pressures. The problem on this tracing is a hole in the rectal balloon. If you don't read it with a critical eye, it will appear that there is poor bladder compliance reflected in the detrusor pressure. However, you can see that the rest of the tracing is responding properly to cough, and the PVS shows no change in pressure. In this case, the rectal balloon needs to be replaced, and this study needs to be repeated. Once the catheters are reading well, we zero to atmospheric pressure. We turn the stop cocks off to the patient, purge the transducers of air, and prior to this step, we position the C-arm for the scout image, ensuring that the transducers are at the height of the pubic symphysis. We then click zero all. This button should not be used once the study begins. Once zeroed, we replace the caps and re-toggle the stopcocks to allow the transducer to be open to the patient. The arm now is off to the syringe. We are now zeroed. The response to cough is perfectly yoked. Graph clipping has been left on, so it's subtle to realize that the PDET is negative. The pressure in the rectal balloon is used to regulate and balance the relative pressures between the two zeroed catheters. So here we toggle off to the transducer and withdraw some fluid from the rectal balloon. We now have the PDET within 5 of 0, our goal for starting the study, but the patch EMG is not responding with a proper guarding reflex. Surface EMG is a proxy for the urethral sphincter but really measures the partially yoked anal sphincter. Patches are placed at 10 and 2 o'clock right next to the anal sphincter. A reference patch is placed overlying the femur near the knee. Needle EMG and oscilloscopes are more accurate but less commonly used. Here the EMG patches have lifted off the skin surface, introducing artifact. Once the patches are manually re-adhered, the EMG guarding reflex is responsive. There is a small toggle to the right of the EMG row which allows alteration of the visual appearance of the EMG on the line. This is the appearance of a sacral nerve stimulator creating artifact in the EMG. A good tracing allows confident interpretation. This patient was previously diagnosed with detrusor sphincter dyssynergia and offered a suprapubic catheter. This study in the patient who has a cystocele has responsive abdominal and bladder catheters allowing proper interpretation of her detrusor pressure. The EMG shows a good response to cough. During the initiation of the contraction, the EMG is in fact flat. The EMG does not change until the flow begins, which represents artifact from the flow passing over the patches. She does not have detrusor sphincter dyssynergia. She needs repair of her prolapse. Tricks for quality. It's important to be physically present to correct and observe during the study. The initial fill rate is important. It should be adjusted to the avoiding diary. For me, the default is 30. Do not use graph clipping without specific reason, for example, an EMG that is not adhering. Patients should have privacy for voids. One can turn on the water or turn out the lights for voids. Men can be stood if needed. And all patients can be moved to a commode from the urodynamics chair if for some reason this is an easier place for them to void. It's also important at the end of the study to ensure that the symptoms were reproduced by asking the patient. You can learn more in this August 2018 supplement in neurourology and urodynamics going over ICS standard documents including good urodynamic practice in a condensed and simplified form. Thank you International Continent Society for the education of a lifetime. Of note, this is not an official ICS lecture. You can find more lectures helpful to your practice at www.facingpelvicpain.org. Feel free to share them.